My father used to leave sharp sounds by the door. Steady conga heads were rare. When you party with grown-ups, you learn not to suffer dancers a weak hand. Otherwise, a safe return to silence becomes less of a road. No yesterday. The great readers, he would say, quote from the kitchen. Yes, chops, cook, steam like jabs, stories, walls that sob, I'm sorry. In the middle of a sacrifice, death always has a shape to introduce. Breath deflates and balloons, a club like an amateur soul drowning in whisper. This poem is really part of a larger collection called The Essential Hits of Shorty Bong Bong, which is a sort of a mythologized look at my uncle, whose name is uh, Pedro Perdomo, and who I've never met, but who was a percussionist. And um, it's a really an underworld sort of uh, book because there's an unidentified poet that sort of guides Shorty into his death, as it were. And um, this is Shorty sort of recalling what it was like uh, to be a kid um, learning how to play uh, the conga and understanding that somehow it was a sort of spiritual experience as well. The book is sort of filled with a, with a, with a sonic charge. And that was important for a, a book about a, a, a drummer, you know. So um, it was as close as I ever got to... Uh, I think playing with, with my uncles and, and my father as well. So that was part of it, I think. Um, and just the fun of, of, of using language as a drum almost, you know, uh, as a lyric. You know, my parents divorced, and so the patrilineal side of my family was basically absent after that. But I remember being in the living room and it was just all drummers and musicians, and they would just jam all night. And part of what I discovered, I think, writing the book um, was that I was dreaming with the music, right? So in other words, I was a kid falling, and I would fall asleep at these parties. But the music would just keep playing and playing and playing and playing. So I'd imagine that that music sort of becomes part of my dreamscape. It becomes part of my unconscious, right? And so this is a way of sort of capturing my childhood in many ways. Because I had never seen my uncle, but he took up a lot of narrative space in the living room. My mother would tell great stories about my uncle. We played in clubs in, in the Bronx, and, and she would physically sort of imitate the way he used to hold a drum, and, and I was like, who is this man? And I remember having sort of a dream with him, or maybe I was a kid, and he slept over one night. And, um, but years later, I had met my, uh, his mother, who was my, my grandmother. Um, and when my grandmother saw me, she started to, to cry because she could see him in me. It's like, all right, something, something's happening here. Basically, I had a sense of who I was writing to. And it was my uncle because I asked him a question. And the question was, um, what was it like that summer that you played with um, Charlie Palmieri and the Sesta All-Stars? Because he, he actually played with them, recorded with them. And his response became the opening uh, to the book. So it was sort of a dialogue. I think it's about music, but also I think it's about afterlife. I think, about, I think it's about who sort of guides us in that journey before that last breath. And what is that bre last breath actually look like.